How are we doing new beautiful people, Kanzi here, bringing you episode 15 of Rise of the Holy Nation. It looks like the Shek attack has just arrived at our base, thankfully there is only one of them at the moment, so the others are going to be following in shortly. We also have the Western Hive Materials Trader coming towards our base as well, so we will need to fight them. The plan's going to be, we're going to go in, take out that Shek leader as quickly as we can, hopefully the rest of the Shek when they start arriving will arrive piecemeal, so we should be able to take them down little by little until they're all taken out, and then when the Western Hive comes, hopefully we're in a situation to fend them off. We are just going to have a check in on Bad Teeth, see how Bad Teeth is doing. For the last two episodes we have been fighting to defend it. The Holy Nation seems to be getting up and getting into the fight a bit better now, as before they were pretty much all down. So I would say Bad Teeth is looking like it's in a situation to hold and that Shek attack hasn't diverted and gone to Bad Teeth, which leaves us in a pretty sweet situation. What we also have is we have the Holy Nation Relief Force that was sent to our base. They are in the top of the Citadel at the moment. So if we try to fight everything on the lowlands and it all starts going wrong, we can always retreat back up to the hill and we'll have plenty of Holy Nation, as you can see here, that are going to happily help us out. And those guys really dislike the Shack and they just really like the Bugman and they will have superior numbers. So we'll be in a pretty sweet situation. So the Shek has decided to start his attack by himself. Classic Shek culture, just running in and hoping for the best. I mean, normally it works, but not against our guys. I would say he's going to get mashed up, but he is doing a fair bit of damage to our guys at the moment. A lot of our guys are still pretty low level. Most of the fighting has been done by Peter and Gnu, so we do need to keep an eye on that and try to get our other guys leveled up. Most of their equipment is pretty terrible, so that's obviously not going to do us any favours. And with this samurai plate, it does proper mess up your combat stats. So being able to fight samurai armour is a slight issue. And then we also have more crop lice coming in. But as soon as we gave our farmer this new samurai armour and some decent weapons, the crop lice don't seem to be as much of an issue as they were before. Not that they were a massive issue, but they were a bit of a bane because what they do is they come in, knock my farmers out, eat our crops and then pull the rest of the adventurous squad out of position that would have to run down and deal with the crop lice. So not great. But now, soon as our farmers can deal with them, we don't need to worry as much. We are going to steal the plank. We'll hand that off to somebody else. We have some of the mercenary guild with us that somehow survived the Battle of Bad Teeth, which is, you know, not really going to change anything, but will help. This is the loss of the elite hunters from the other episode. They were playing dead, but it looks like the Holy Nation has decided to enslave them. And now this is the problem that we were waiting on. The Western Hive has come. And the Western Hive in this playthrough is far more dangerous than what they'd be normally. A couple reasons. Firstly, we have Hivers Extended, which gives them better weapons. We also have the Hard Gen mod, which gives them better stats. And then we also have the Viable Soldier Drone mod installed, which gives them an extra 20 hit points to each of their body parts, well, each of their limbs. So all of their limbs are 120, so they're not quite as tough as Shek, but they're stronger than humans. And this makes them... Not super difficult to take down, but definitely a lot more challenging than what they would be in vanilla. I like to think this adds a little bit of flavour and makes the Western Hive more along the lines of what I reckon the Western Hive should be. Seeing as these guys are meant to be soldier drones and they are basically just bred for war, they should be good fighters. Should they be strong as the Shek? I don't think so. Should they be stronger than humans? Well, yeah, basically everything should be stronger than humans because we are super squidgy as a species. So most things should be able to absolutely ruin us. But yeah, this is going to make taking down this Western Hive materials trader a little bit more challenging. The priorities are going to be we want to take down the Garus first because Garus are fairly big and tanky. And also means if everything else goes wrong, we can at least kill off the Garus so they're not in the fight. And then strip all the resources out of them so we're going to get a little bit of something for this. The Western Hive is running up the hill which is a massive mistake on their part because the Holy Nation's up there and the Holy Nation loves to attack bugmen. So most of our laborers, smiths, farmers, turret gunners, all of those guys are going to be nice and safe so long as they stay up on the hill. We do have a few of them running around, obviously trying to heal our guys up, which is good because we don't want to lose people in this fight. But then we also have a bunch of guys that aren't really wearing armor. Almost everyone has medikits now, even though the last couple we saw don't, but a lot of people do, which is a move in the right direction. We're running low on armor, 
which is one of the things that we are starting to focus down because we're going to have the hemp production and as soon as that hemp production is reliable and we have more hemp farms up we're going to be able to kick out all of the fabric that we will need for the armors. We have just gone around and checked the guards for medikits and moved them around. As you can see, a bunch of the hives went up the hill and they're just getting overrun by the Holy Nation, which is super good. And as the Holy Nation beats those guys up, they will aggro down into this bottom section of hives here. But as you can see, Gnu and Peter are doing a far better job this time around than they were the other time. And soon, real soon, these hives will be taken out. We're going to be able to go around get a whole bunch of medikits off them. We'll take their glaives because their glaives can sell for a decent amount. And then where this is a materials trader, we're going to be able to get a bunch of building materials. We're also going to be able to get some crops as well and iron plates, which are all things that we're going to need. And to take the garries out, nice and simple, all we got to do is just remove their meat or their hides and then it is GG for the garu. So we're going to be in quite a good situation. Garus are down, soldier drones are falling, we're also disarming them and there doesn't seem to be too many of them left. Once the western hives numbers fell and they lost their archers, it was over pretty quickly. There were a couple holdouts on the way but the United Cities seems to be dealing with them quite nicely but we got a whole bunch of supplies in that Garu that we are going to go over and loot. Western Hive is now dealt with and it is just a matter of moving some resources around. We are going to give Kinsey a toothpick so he can start training up his precision and crossbows because real soon we are going to be chucking him onto a, a turret. Peter has just gone around and handed out as many medical supplies as he can to those that didn't have them. We still got one or two people without medical supplies but we are in a far better situation than we were before and now we are going to head down to stack because we have a whole load of glaives that we're going to be able to sell off going to need some more hemp production so we're going to get another hemp farm down because we have enough in storage that we'll be able to get this up and running super quick we've also got a few guys that have been pulled out of position to try and help the holy nation and there's also a bunch of mules there which means we're going to be able to get a whole load of hide gnu's going to go fight the crocodile and gray mane is now dead where was the gray mane Oh, just there. Uh, okay, that is, uh, uh, that, that, that's annoying, is how I'll describe that. So, Greymane is obviously now dead. The Iran Crocodile got him. So, what we're going to do is we are going to send Gnu to take down that Crocodile. I'm not sure what we're going to do with it, but we can just loot it for its parts. Or, or do we take it? I reckon that we take the Iran Crocodile for now, and then... With the Tame Beasties mod, this means that we are going to be able to recruit that Orion Crocodile and replace Grey Mane. I think that's a little bit distasteful, but an Orion Crocodile would be pretty awesome to have in our group. They have super quick attack speeds, they do quite a lot of damage, and they do some insane bleed damage as well. So against the Hives, they are going to be super effective unless they just get peppered by the crossbow bolts so things like hungry bandits and people that have lots of crossbows are super effective against orion crocodiles but people like the shek that have little bleed damage are not very good against the orion crocodiles the orion crocodiles absolutely will run through the shek absolutely no problems so yeah i reckon we keep it call it nippy mark two we will need to put down a cage so we can put the orion crocodile in it once it is in the cage we'll need to leave it for a day or so and then we will be able to tame it and bring it into our base it is just about the wonkiest cage that we can put down but building up on this plateau is turning out to be somewhat challenging with things that don't have access to the slopeless mod just from how uneven the terrain is but you can pretty clearly see that. We will need to name the Orion Crocodile, so if you want to name it, just message down in the comments section below with names or suggestions. Peter is now down in stack, and we have sold off all the supplies that we got from the Western Hive. We have found a, another recruit with the money we got, so we're gonna call him Barry, we're gonna make him a little bit bigger, a little bit more intimidating, and then we will send him back to the base. We will assign him to becoming a farmer, because we need to ramp up our farming production of hemp, wheat straw, and green fruits. We'll drop him a medikit, and then like I said, we'll send him back to the base. We have had a look around stacks, see if there are any more recruits that we want, but there aren't any at the moment, so Peter will now be returning back to the base as well. Now we have enough hemp and enough hemp farms, it's time to put down the hemp processor. This is gonna make us fabric, and with fabric, we're gonna be able to make our armors, our weapons, and all of that good stuff along with the medical supplies. So we are soon to be in a super sweet situation. We're gonna put some more turrets in, 
just so we can shoot down on everyone coming into the kill zone and seeing as we're making the kill zone now let's chuck in a gate so the enemy at least knows where to go if you have the gate then they will come to the gate because that will class as the entrance to your base so here we can start setting all the harpoons and the turrets around and then we are going to have a super super efficient kill zone and we're also going to know where everyone is showing up coming from and going to and with this if we want we can properly seal off the base when I can finally put it down because getting that in the right place is super difficult trying to get walls in this area didn't work so this is the solution I found and we just gotta hope that the pathing works with it and I reckon this is going to be the start of properly transforming into the fortress monastery pretty much straight away we have some dust bandits coming in it looks like the pathing for this area is now sorted so this means we're going to have lots and lots of tacks and lots and lots of raids showing up to our base so we are going to need to make sure that we are ready but us being raided is really really good for us for the simple fact that a lot of our adventurous squad hasn't had much training yet but if there's continuous attacks coming on they are going to be able to get plenty of training they're going to level up nice and quick and then they are going to become super dangerous also the other guys that are in our base are going to get dragged in occasionally and it is good for their toughness it's good for their melee defense and melee attack so we are soon to have a group of very very powerful guys that we can take to fight the ship turret squads are online as well they aren't super great at the moment because they're still a fairly low level but they are leveling up decently quickly i wouldn't say super quick because it's really not but they are getting better with each raid coming through as you can see they've also managed to aggro the crop lice which is what we want because we want the crop lice coming up and attacking the turret gunners instead of going through and eating our crops and this is starting to look like we are in a very good situation. We have defenses, we have armor production, we have hemp, we have food, and we can hold out now. We are pretty much self-sufficient. Only thing that we need to set up is a coal mine and a steel refinery. With those, we're gonna be able to turtle, grind all the stuff that we need, only go out to trade so we can get supplies so we can bring the adventurers guild in and with that we are going to soon form the holy army and crush the shack so to do that we are going to need to do some work on the armory we are going to need to start chainmail sheep production and chainmail armor production we're going to need fabric storage we're going to need armor storage and we are also going to need weapon storage and from here our main priority is to gear up get everyone equipped get everyone trained get fortified and be in a situation to defend against the narco attacks and then to be able to take the war to them we are in a very good situation and from here we are going to grow in power rapidly unfortunately it will need to be a shorter episode today so thank you very much for watching episode 15 of rise of the holy nation i've been Kanzi. all your likes comments sub support have been amazing and remember you guys are awesome i'll catch you on the next one